اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق Welcome to our 30-part Ramadan series on wisdom to feed the soul. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Salatan tufrihuhu wa tusiduhu wa turdihi wa jzihi biha anna ma huwa ahluhu. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen wa alihi wa sallim. Allah bless you all. Ahlan wa sahlan. And let's continue with some of the great words of wisdom of the great masters of self-refinement of this ummah. So today we look at the words of Sheikh Ahmad ibn Ata'illah, a secondary, the famous Egyptian uh, scholar, Maliki Faqih, and you know, Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as attested to by many, many people after him. So he's got a fa- very famous uh, compilation of short, succinct uh, pieces of wisdom uh, regarding drawing closer to Allah and uh, and things like that. So we look at one of those statements today. He said, لا يعظم الذنب عندك عظمة تصدك عن الحسن ظن بالله فإن من عرف ربه استصغر بجنبي كرمه ذنبه He said, don't let a sin seem so great in your eyes that it blocks you from having a good opinion of Allah. Because he who knows his Lord deems his own sin insignificant next to uh, his generosity. So there's a a really key principle here, which is knowing that Allah doesn't uh, benefit from our good deeds and He's not harmed by our uh, uh, bad deeds, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can look at a disbeliever who, you know, objects to God and fights the messengers and, you know, just rejects everything of the truth for a lifetime. And then moments before his death, this person can sincerely repent, turn to God, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can wipe everything away. Right? So the believer looks at his sins uh, as, you know, a slip. I've slipped. And he looks at the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he thinks, I made a mistake. I want to avoid making this make mistake in the future and I will do my best to do so. But this doesn't govern, this sin doesn't decide, you know, where I will be and who, how I am and who I am. Rather, that's the decision of Allah. So this person looks at his sin and thinks, okay, it might be a huge sin, but Allah's generosity and you know, his forgiveness, his mercy is you know, far greater than anything that I can do, uh, any wrong I can do. It reminds me of a dua the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught someone. He said, say, Allahumma maghfiratuka awsa'u min dhunubi wa rahmatuka arja indi min amali. And he said, oh Allah, uh, your, your mercy is vaster than my sins. And uh, sorry, your forgiveness is vaster than my sins, and your mercy. Uh, um, I have more hope in your mercy than I do in my own deeds, and that's the perfect attitude to have. So Allah can wipe it all away. It doesn't matter what you've done, how many times you've done it. All it takes is a sincere tawbah, turning back to Allah. Oh Allah, I won't do this again. I'm sorry for doing it in the first place. Please forgive me. Please accept me. And you know, you resolve not to go back. And if you're to, if there are any rights that need to be restored, given to someone, you do you do so. And then just imagine, you know, treat it as though it's been forgiven. Right? Don't keep going back and fixating on it, and just <clears throat> move forward. So where's the danger, though? The danger is in the attitude where someone, uh, so, uh, where someone sins without caring, without thinking twice, without being bothered that Allah has forbidden these things. <clears throat> so. I talked about how the believer looks at his sin and the fasiq or someone who just doesn't care about God, he looks at his sins, as we see in a hadith actually, the munafiq, he looks at his sins as though it's it's like a fly buzzing around his face and he just swats it aside. He's not too focused on it, uh, as opposed to a believer who sees his sins as like a, a boulder about to fall on him. You know, so the attitude 
goes a long way in in deciding you know what how much harm this sin will do to you so the the way to do it is to turn to Allah oh Allah Oh Allah, and this is something our religion teaches us to, to constantly turn back to Allah, constantly try to try to trying to be in line with what Allah wants from us. Even if you mess up, even if you slip up, just keep turning back to Allah again and again and again. And what you find is over time this turning ends up turning you <laughs> right and you know you you end up a different person and Allah makes it easy to leave those sins behind so keep turning to Allah and you know and asking for forgiveness don't let any whisper from the devil or any words from any any person trying to push you off course make you think that there's no hope for you there's always hope for the believer always hope you know even a disbeliever five mi minutes before death there's hope for him so you know what about someone who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's always hope so he says whoever knows his Lord he knows look how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is look how generous he is and my sin although you know the believer is not proud of his sins but he, say, but he realizes that my sin no matter how heinous it may seem Allah can forgive it Right, but and that's the proper attitude. Whereas the attitude was, oh, so what if I've got these sins, right? I deserve to be forgiven, or, or something like that. That's the wrong approach. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to benefit us from every state, the ups and the downs, when we make our mistakes and when we do things uh, in a way that pleases Him. We ask Him to benefit us through all of that, so we're always drawing closer to Him and never further away from Him. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah